a man who raped and murdered 30 women was arrested by an invisible force. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet, the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, the investigative reporter. It's going to be hard for you to believe, but on December 11th, 1981, a woman was praying, and she felt an impression to go to a Kmart department store, and she drove to the store, got out of her car, and Margie Palm, what happened? Well, I was walking to my car, and when I got to the car, I felt something in my back, and I thought, what is that? And I turned around, and there was this man standing there. He was shaking and crying, and he had dressed in black. He had a gun about that big, not a small handgun, a hmm. big 38 caliber revolver, and he had it stuck in me. And then when I turned around, he stuck it right here. And he said, I am the man who killed the girl last night at, um, it was at a bar in, um, in, in San Antonio, Texas, where I live. And he said, and I have um, cut a man's heart out in prison. And if you don't do exactly what I tell you to do, I'm gonna kill you. And I, I knew he was serious. I'd never seen anybody remotely like this man except on TV. And so, um, and the other thing was I hadn't read the paper, so I didn't know that this man had done this, but it was headlines of our papers, newspapers, and uh, friends of mine told me there were helicopters cir circling San Antonio looking for this man. So, I mean, what he said was bad enough, but yeah. had you known that this yeah, was a man that, that murdered and raped yeah. 30 women, and the yeah. thing that's kind of uh, amazing is there was a certain profile he was looking for. He was looking for a woman, because this, these are the women that he had murdered and raped previously that looked exactly like Margie. But she didn't know any of this, so the gun's in your ribs. What's the first thing you thought? Yeah, well, the first thing I thought was, I'm gonna die today. That was the first thought that came into my mind. And uh, I could feel this terror trying to come on me. My, I could feel my body starting to shake. And then out of my mouth, it was very interesting, out of my mouth came the words, do you know Jesus Christ? <laughs> <laughs> You're saying that with the gun in your ribs, do you know Jesus Christ? What did he say? He, he said, no, I don't want to know Jesus Christ, lady. He said, get in the car and sit on your hands until I decide what we're going to do. So I got in the car, I sat in the passenger side of the car, and he told me to sit on my hands, which mm -hmm. I did. And um, he stuck his gun right here in my ribs, and he told me, if you try to escape, uh, I will shoot this gun and kill you. So, and I knew he was serious. I'd never seen anybody like this man. So anyway, I started to pray, and I, I was like this in my car, and I was praying, and all of a sudden, I saw a, like a picture inside of myself, and um, I, I also saw scriptures from the Bible. Like, there mm -hmm. they were in front of me. And one of the scriptures said, I have given you authority over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Did this help you? Yes, it helped me. I mean, I, I had been a believer in Jesus for many years. And of course, you know, this man's telling me he's going to kill me. And I'm seeing what God, this, I felt that this was what God was telling me, was the scripture. And then I saw the scripture that said, um, I, I, I have, these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out demons. So then I saw a picture of myself take my hands out from under myself and put them on his head and command these uh, demonic spirits to come out of him, which might sound very strange, but... Margie, this whole deal is unreal <laughs> to me. 
it's unreal. So, so you're getting all these messages from I'm God. Getting all these messages. But in the meantime, is a real life man that's, right. that's a maniac with a gun right next to you that's in right. control. But you know, the Bible says you're not wrestling with flesh and blood. It's in other words, you're not wrestling with a human being. You are wrestling with principalities, powers, and rulers of the darkness of this world. It says you're wrestling with a demonic spirit many times in it. And I mean, I knew this man was filled with that. He was so filled with hatred and fear and, and he was just, you could see it all over him. So, uh, did you I, pray for him? And I believed the Bible. You but know, did believed, you pray for him? I did. That was the next thing I did. And that, this probably was the hardest thing, one of the hardest things I did all day because, you know, the Bible says to have faith and faith is believing what God says and then doing it. So I had to believe so much what I was seeing that I did it. And I thought to myself, if this is not God, I'm dead. If I'm, just, sure. if I'm just making this up. So I took my, I said, uh, I didn't look at him. I said, I'm going to pray for you. And he said, lady, you're not going to pray for me. And I said, yes, I am. I took my hands out from under myself. I put them on his head and I said, in the name of Jesus, I use the authority of the name of Jesus and I command every demonic spirit to come out of you, of out of this man. I command it to leave my car. I command the spirit of death to leave my car. And I am telling you today that this man will be serving Jesus before today is over. And I mean, I was screaming this in the car. And well, what was he doing? Well, I think I, I think he was just frozen. He, he probably never had anything like that happen, obviously. I'm sure the other 30 women I mean, did do that. <laughs> I sat back down and I sat, put my hands back under myself and I kind of went like this. And the next thing he said was, oh my gosh, I'm in a car with a religious freak. <laughs> <laughs> he really was. <laughs> I know. And uh, he said, are you conning me? And uh, I said, what do you, I've never even heard anybody say that to me. And I said, no, this is real. I'm really like this. And that morning I had put my Bible in my car and um, this book of scripture that I'd been compiling. And so I said, look, you think that's normal for a girl to carry a Bible and a book of scripture and evangelistic tapes I had in my car? I said, you think that's normal? And he said, no, I don't think it's normal. <laughs> I said, this is real. I mean, I said, you, God put you. All of a sudden I was realizing that God had put him in my car. And the other thing I was realizing was that um, the fear and terror that was in the car had left. After I prayed, all of a sudden this peace came in the car and um listen you think you have problems how <laughs> would you have liked to have been in that car that margie was in i know you'll be back we'll be back in just a moment Hello YouTube, Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word, it means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe, then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, and we have a word in Hebrew. It's called chutzpah. It means nerve. And Margie Palm had nerve. She was in a car with a psychopathic rapist murderer, had just murdered 30 women that looked exactly like her, one just a few hours earlier. And she puts his, her hands on him and prays that he be set free. She, uh, he calls her a religious fanatic and he drives her to a secluded spot. And what happened next, Margie? Well, the next thing that happened was he said to me, uh, I don't know why, but I don't feel like raping you. I feel more love coming out of you than anybody I've ever known in my life. I don't know why. I mean, I, I don't understand. Are you an angel or who are you? <laughs> and I don't understand why you're not afraid of me. And I said, well, you know, Jesus is not going to appear to you unless it's a phenomena, but he appears through his people. And you are being confronted with Jesus Christ today, with his love, because all day he was telling me that he had, he had, he said, I have so much hatred in me. If, if there is a God, there's no way he can get it out of me. 
And I said, well, I would say, well, there's no, the only reason I'm in this car is because God put me in the car with you. And uh, so when I wasn't afraid of him, he started thinking I was an angel. But that was be the reason I didn't have fear is because God's power was in the car. I mean, it, you know, he said there's a scripture that says there's no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. And he was feeling that. Now, what did you feel towards him? Uh, that was the other amazing thing was, uh, it, you know, at first I felt that fear. But after I prayed that prayer, this peace came into my car and I, I felt this overwhelming compassion toward him that I, I don't know that I've ever felt that much compassion for anybody that is, hates me and is trying to kill me. But I, I felt this overwhelming love and mercy and compassion for him. And I, I kept hearing the, uh, uh, God seemed to be telling me over and over, my mercy endures forever. And I felt, I, I kept thinking to myself, this is God's love. This is how God loves people. And a man and as separated from God as this man could feel, that love was able to penetrate it. Yeah, it was penetrating him because even after a while, I mean, you know, he, he was saying horrible words, cussing up a storm, really. But every time he'd say a cuss word, he would say, I, I'm so sorry, lady, <laughs> I'm saying that. I am so sorry. I know that's offending you. He was starting to become convicted every time he'd say a word, a, a, a word that might be offensive to me which was very interesting. Um, then we started talking and, uh, you know, he said, I'm never going back to prison again. And I said, well, you're in a prison. Right now you're in a prison of hate. And I said, there are people that go into prisons and help prisoners, evangelists. And he said, well, like name one. So I named an evangelist, Kenneth Copeland, who I named. And uh, he said, well, where does this man live? And I said, well, he lives in Fort Worth. And he said, well, I want to go up and see him. And I said, well, I don't know this man personally. So he said, but I want, to, I, I want us to go up there. So uh, that's exactly what happened. We ended up, um, he wanted to go up through Austin. And uh, when he said that to me, I saw a, a picture, and I'm sure it was from God, because I saw a, uh, a road blockade all around Austin. And uh, I, then I saw a picture of Kerrville, Texas, and I felt that God was telling me to tell him we're supposed to go to Kerrville, and I saw him getting on a bus, and I said, you need to get, you're supposed to get on a bus. And I told him all this stuff, which all sounds very bizarre and crazy, except uh, this is all written in the newspaper in San Antonio. I mean, it's, it, it's not, you know, it sounds like so, I'm so basically, it up. you had a, uh, a, a vision had a showing vision. you there was this road block. He must have thought you were nuts, but did. how did he think that well, you were telling him the truth? Well, after I told him this, uh, he said, I want you to go into that uh, convenience store there and get me a paper, cigarettes, and beer. So, He's really trusting you at this point yeah. because you could have gone out the back yeah, door. I could have. Or, or told the man, I've got a psychopath that's uh, with a gun on me. Yeah, I really could have. But uh, I, I really believed that God had put me there. I really I felt this peace in me. I, I felt that God had really put me in, in the situation. So I, I bought the beer, I bought the cigarettes, I bought the paper, and I looked down on the paper and I noticed he was headlines of the paper. And uh, it was amazing to me when I looked at it, I still didn't have fear when I looked at it. When I, I took it back to the car and he started reading the paper and he said, how did, you, how did you, have you read this paper before? And I said, no. And he said, he read me the first uh, paragraph and in the first paragraph it talked about a road blockade around Austin. Exactly, exactly what you had what seen what in I the just, vision so he knew you were hearing from yeah. God. Yeah, I said, that's God. So did he Yeah, he not, said. He said, now, uh, where are we supposed to go? <laughs> where is he's now asking you, no, yeah, and you're the one he's going me. to murder and rape. He's asking me. Uh, let me tell you something. If God <laughs> could love this man, comprehend how much God could love you. God has so much love that you've never even experienced that you're about to experience. We'll be back right after this word. The 
want to go to the control room and find out who will be on next week. Janie, who's up? You'll be interviewing a woman by the name of Rose Price, and she experienced the horrors of the Holocaust. Nearly 100 of her relatives died in the Holocaust, and Rose herself was experimented on and tortured, and she had so, so much hate that she ended up moving to America, and I mean, she, she didn't die in the Holocaust, which was a miracle, but she still had hate, hatred towards the German people. And when she moved to America, she got married, had children, and when her daughter was a teenager, she said, Mommy, I believe in Jesus. And Rose felt betrayed because she thought it was in Jesus' name that her whole family was killed. And so Rose wanted to just prove to her family that this Jesus is not the Messiah. And so it, she just ended up searching the scriptures, and she ended up finding out that Jesus really was the Messiah, and he gave her supernatural forgiveness for the German people. I can't wait for that. Thank you, Janie. Now, Margie, here you are in the car with a psychopath who's murdered 30 women that look just like you, murdered and raped, uh, and all, all of a sudden, he's taking direction from you because God's supernatural. He realizes it's God mm -hmm. speaking through you, and he even had uh, the uh, trust to let you call your husband? Yeah, he told me to call my husband, so I called home. And all Why of did he sudden, tell you to call well, your husband? Uh, you know, he said all day, he kept saying, I don't know if I'm going to be able to let you go or not. And, you know, he just changed his mind. He said, call your husband. So I called my husband and uh, when my husband answered the phone, all of a sudden the calm that I'd had all day went out the window. <laughs> I, I started shaking. I'm sure. When I heard his voice, I started thinking, am I going to see my family again and things mm -hmm. like that. And uh, anyway, when I got off the phone, Stephen was standing there with the gun on me, and he said, you're really upset. And uh, I, I put my hands on him, and I said, in Jesus' name, I take authority in Jesus' name over the spirit of fear and command it to leave me. And it left immediately, and that peace came back on me. And I well, said... Why didn't you tell your husband what was going on? Uh, you had a... Well, he I, wouldn't have known. Because Stephen was standing right there. Oh, I see. Yeah, he was standing okay. right there with a gun on me when I was on okay. the phone. All right. So I couldn't tell him. And he knew something was wrong, and he kept saying, what's the matter? I said, I'll be home later. I'm out shopping. It was mm -hmm. Christmas time. So, um, you know, he just let it go at that. And so after I got off the phone, I was shaken up. But uh, God's peace came back on me right after I prayed, and we got back in the car and started going up to mm -hmm. Kerrville, where I'd seen God showed us to go. And... Uh, so on the way up there, Stephen started telling me that he had this son. And uh, he said, I haven't told you this, but I have a son. And I said, well, I want to ask you a question. If this, if this son had committed the same crimes that you've committed, I don't know what they are, if he'd done exactly what you did and have done, would you be willing to die for him? And, and let's just say there is a hell. Would you be willing to go to hell and pay for pay for all of these crimes that God would say if you do this you're gonna pay for every crime that your son's committed would you be willing to die and go to hell for him and uh, I want to know if, if, if you could still love your son if, if he'd done those kind of crimes that's a very would uh, you forgive him that's a very penetrating question so it was he said well that's a hard question lady and I said well you need to answer it I want you to answer me and he said well you know what you're saying to a man yeah. a psychopath with a gun yeah. that you need to answer it yes. lady you got chutzpah <laughs> <laughs> so he said uh, he said you know what I would die for my son I would die for him and uh, I would forgive him and I said, well, you know what? That's exactly what Jesus Christ did for you. And he just looked at me. He said, um, he said, I, you've been preaching to me all day, and I finally understand what you're trying to say. And then we just kind of drove on in silence for a while. And all of a sudden, he pulled my car over to the side of the road. And um, he was looking all around my car. He looked in back of him and all over the place. And um, I didn't know what he was doing. What he, was he looking for? Well, he stopped my car on the side of the road after looking all over the place, and then his hands went up in the air like this, and he said, Jesus, I'm sorry for everything I've ever done. Please forgive me. I want to go to heaven. And I just sat there staring him at him because I had not 
said to do that. But what had happened was, he told me later, he said, uh, remember when I was looking around the car? And I said, yes. He said, I heard an audible voice. And he said, it came from up here and it said to me, this is the last time I'm going to call you, Stephen. Mm. And so he said, when I heard that voice, and I, now I didn't hear it, but he heard it. And he said, it was very loud. He said, I knew it was Jesus. And he said, I knew all day, everything that had gone on, how, you know, I, I, he said, I could just see a, the peace that you'd had and everything. And I realized that this was not a joke. You had this, everything you'd said was true. And there really was a Jesus and is a Jesus. And this was not a, something you made up. He said, I had thought it was just, a, you know, you had this strong faith but I knew it was something real. So look, he's one so. of the 10 most wanted men in America. There's helicopters going all over. Everyone's looking for him. They're furious to find him. What did he do next now that he believes in Jesus? Well, I mean, uh, at that point in the car, you know, when he put his hands mm. up after hearing this voice, he started crying and uh, he said, it's gone, it's gone. And I said, what's gone? And he said, lady, something just came in me and all the hatred is gone out of me. Hmm. He said, I've been hating and hating and I've hated myself and hated everybody else. And I'm, I feel like I've been clean, I'm, I'm clean now. And I said, well, you have, what the Bible says, you have been born again. And he said, what in the world is that? And I said, well, when you got born the first time, you have an earthly mother and father and you have their, their blood in you. you. You are their seed. Well, when you ask Jesus to come into your life, he puts his seed into you, which is eternal life. And he becomes, God becomes your father and Jesus' blood comes into you. You have supernatural DNA and he washes your sins away supernaturally. I said, it's supernatural. And he said, he said, I, I don't deserve this. He said, I, I don't deserve to, but I feel, I feel like I'm clean, lady. And he was overwhelmed with this feeling. And so then we drove on up to Kerrville. And when we got there, I went into the bus station and uh, I said, is there a bus going to Austin anytime soon? And he said, in 30 minutes, there's a bus going. So he, Stephen and I sat there waiting for this bus. And uh, when I went back to the car, he said, don't tell me there's a bus going to Fort Worth. And I said, yeah, the next bus coming in is going to Fort Worth. So they in eventually caught him and um, he was executed. But uh, there is a big prison ministry now as a result of his life. He, um, what did he say had, to the police officer that arrested well, him? Well, um, he said, if I had seen you earlier this morning, there would have been a shootout and I would have killed myself but I met this lady today and she changed my life and I'll never be the same again, so. Looking back in retrospect, how could you have done that, Margie? I couldn't how have done How could it. you have gone through this? I couldn't have done it without Jesus. It I mean, you're just, you're just a mom. I know, I am. <laughs> well, I mean, I couldn't do it without Jesus. But that morning I said, I will never forget this. That morning I said, God, I'll do anything you want me to do for you. Don't ever say that if you don't mean it. Because yes, God literally you, used me. Had you not, had I not done I'd that, be dead. you'd be dead. I'd be dead. Did you hear that? Do you remember the voice that this man heard? This is your last chance. I believe that some of you that are watching me right now, God has been calling you for a long time. And this is your last, last chance. Pray this prayer with me and mean it to the best of your ability. I don't care what you have done. God loves you. His love is pouring right through this television set right now. There is something happening to you and that's God's spirit. Repeat this prayer. Dear God, out loud, dear God, I'm a sinner. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I believe that Jesus died for my sins and because of his blood I am clean and now that I am clean I make Jesus my Messiah and Lord Lord Jesus come inside of me take over my life 
I need to know my Father God. I need to know the goodness of God. My earthly father made mistakes, but oh God, your love is being poured into me right now. Fill me, say this out loud, fill me in Jesus' name with your Holy Spirit. You see, because of Jesus, you've been made holy. God says, I remember your sins no more. Fill them right now, oh God. Let them experience the love of the Father, the love, the clean, undefiled love of the Father. Let them experience your peace and let nothing separate them from your love. Let nothing ever separate them again. I urge you to get a Bible, start reading it, and start telling God how much you love him because you are special. God really, really loves you. He really does. He sent me here to tell you. That's why I'm here. He loves, he loves you. He does.